Solving equations for one unknown, the old school way. Whenever you have an equation with one variable, that variable is not really a variable, but an unknown. If it's a linear function and not, for instance, something like a quadratic or absolute value function, there is one number on a number line that makes the equation a true statement. Each of these unknowns fits somewhere on this number line for all three of these equations. In algebra, there is a convention of marking the solution as a point on the number line. The point could be on the integer or between integers someplace. Since the number line extends infinitely in each direction, to the left, negative infinity, to the right, positive infinity, a solution could be outside the labeled numbers. Let's look at our first problem, 12 minus n equals 13. Since we are solving for n, let's circle that first. In solving, we need to find the value for n that makes the equation a true statement. We can use principles of algebra to get the n by itself. What we can do to figure out the order of what needs to be eliminated first to solve for n is to draw rings around the remaining numbers we need to eliminate. The next ring includes the negative sign. It's the red ring here. Now we place a final ring including the 12. The purple ring encloses everything on the left side of the equation. Picture the left side of the equation with the rings like the layers of an onion. Onions, like the expression on the left side of the equation, have layers and we can get to the center of the onion by peeling one layer of a time, at a time. Let's peel the outside layer on the left with the 12 inside of it. What do we do to peel off this layer? We peel the layer by subtracting 12 from both sides of the equation. We subtract 12 from the left side of the equation. And since we subtract 12 from the left side of the equation, we need to subtract 12 from the right side to follow the golden rule of algebra. The 12 minus 12 on the left side cancel out. The layer with the 12 disappears. And on the right side, 13 minus 12 equals 1. Now we have to eliminate the red ring with the negative sign, that layer. What does the negative sign mean? It means that n is multiplied by negative 1. What, we need, what do we need to do? We need to divide by negative 1. And if we divide the left side by negative 1, what do we have to do on the right side of the equation? We have to divide it by negative 1 also. The red layer is peeled off. All we have left is the layer with n itself, and we see the answer is n equals negative 1. To graph the solution, we mark the point on the number line. To check the answer, put the answer in the calculator by pressing the negative sign first, then enter the 1, store for n by pressing the STO key, or storage key, on the left side of the keypad, then enter n by pressing the alpha key first, and then press the log key on the left side, it has the green n above it, and then press enter. So now we've stored negative 1 for n. We check the solution by entering the left side of the equation. And here we've entered 12 minus n. Press Enter. And since 13 equals 13, we have proven that negative 1 is the correct value for n. Check. Let's look at another problem. 3y plus 6 equals negative 3. Stop the video and see if you can solve this problem, then restart to see if you got it right. First I'll draw the layers to remind us of what to do first. The first layer has the positive 6 in it. What do we do to get rid of it? We subtract it from both sides. Numbers on the left cancel. Bring down the result. We have 3y equals negative 9. Now we put the layers again. Let's get rid of the next layer, the 3, by dividing both sides. 3 over 3 on the left cancel. Bring down the result. y equals negative 3. Let's check our answer. We first store negative 3 for y, negative 3, then storage, then we press alpha, and then the uh, 1 key. Press enter. 
and then we enter the left side of the equation 3y plus 6 and we see that equals negative 3 check now let's summarize first we need to establish the layers of what order of operations needs to be done to solve for the unknown secondly we need to solve for the unknown and finally step three we need to check our answer I plan to have a video out on solving one variable equations using the magic bridge method and some uh, also using graphing calculator methods as well. Thanks for viewing.